As gruesome videos and photos of bodies emerge from the Kyiv suburb of Bucha, Kremlin-backed media outlets are denouncing them as a hoax. In detailed broadcasts to millions of viewers, correspondents and hosts of Russian state TV channels are reporting on this, saying that some photo and video evidence of the killings were fake. This while others showed that Ukrainians were responsible for the bloodshed. But satellite images from early March show the dead were left out on the streets of Bucha for weeks. The photos and videos have set off a new wave of global condemnation and revulsion. Well, joining us now to get a better idea of what is happening on the ground in Ukraine is Dennis Thompson, retired major general and fellow at the Canadian Global Affairs Institute. General Thompson, welcome to Forum Daily, sir. Good to be here. Thank you. So we mentioned that Russian state TV are basically calling all of these civilian killings in Bucha a hoax. Uh, What evidence do we have of these atrocities, not only in Bucha, but we're hearing about civilian killings in Mariupol as well? Well, as you mentioned, uh, Nima, the satellite imagery itself is proof positive that this was done by the Russians because the satellite imagery is dated from the period of the Russian occupation. Uh, In addition, you've got reputable reporters on the scene within hours of the Russian withdrawal, and they are soliciting eyewitness reports. And these are reporters that have been in several war zones. And and, and, and plus, on top of that, is all the smartphone cameras, which didn't exist in previous wars, that have recorded a number of uh, atrocities in a lifetime. So uh, the bottom line is the Russian fakes have been, the Russians have claimed these are fakes. They have been run through a bunch of media experts who have pointed out where the Russian errors are and have essentially debunked it is this is, without question, Russian atrocities. And I want to take a deeper look at this misinformation used by Russia. So how is fake news being used within Russia to justify its invasion of Ukraine, sir? Well, Russian TV, as you probably know, is closely controlled and it's uh, unlike the West, it's filtered through the government. And it's something that, uh, frankly, the older generation of Russia depends on. Uh, You'll also be aware that, of course, a number of independent media sites were essentially shut down by the Russian government as this conflict uh, kicked off. In the past, they just shouted over top of them. But this time they see they they believe it's necessary to actually shut them down. So the only access you have to accurate information in Russia is to go through the Internet. And for that, you basically need a VPN. Uh, And unless you're able to dig that deep, you're not going to get the truth as it were. So uh, essentially, the Russian population lives in an echo chamber, an echo chamber that is controlled by the Russian government. That's how they are uh, portraying this conflict as war and getting the news out to their population, at least their side of it. And meanwhile, NATO Secretary General is saying that Russian forces are repositioning for a critical phase of the war. So what exactly is this critical phase and what do you expect this to look like? Well, I think it's no secret that the Russians, as we've already talked about, have pulled back from Kyiv in the area around Kyiv and back into uh, back into Russia and have repositioned to take parts of the east and the southern uh, parts of, of Ukraine. Uh, they're aimed clearly at the Donbass, and of course they want to take out Maripol. The whole military idea is to create a land bridge between the Donbass region and Russia and the, the bit that they've already annexed in 2014, which is the Crimea. Uh, I think we can expect to see a lot of combat in that area. I'm not convinced that the Russians have the stomach for it anymore. There are lots of reports of continued low Russian morale and, in fact, combat refusals on on the part of some combat forces that have been committed to this fight. So what that means is that Russia will continue to pound civilian areas areas in an effort to get them to... uh, Uh, to to get them to surrender. And I don't see that happening anytime soon. The initiative has clearly shifted from Russia to Ukraine, and that Mm -hmm. is good news. All right, sir, just a quick 45 seconds left here, but advocates are calling for more action by Canada in this war. So what else can we do as a country? Well, I think we need to say really quickly that Canada has done an awful lot. Under this Operation Unifier that you may have heard of, Canada has trained over 30,000 junior leaders in Ukraine since 2015. And it's that change in command culture inside the Ukrainian military that has done a lot. So that, that's a plus. We need to reinforce the enhanced forward presence battle group that we have in Lat- Latvia under Operation Reassurance. And NATO has committed to more forces to that area to make sure that Russia doesn't try to nibble that off. 
And finally, we have to take this 2% of GDP target seriously. And I hope to see some big movement on behalf of this government during the budget, which is about to be announced on Thursday. All right, General Thompson, thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily. My pleasure.